Jamie King talking with Ryan Adams about his capstone project. We're talking further. I have what looks here as hair. Tell me about this. So, okay, this is actually, uh, again, in the game engine that we've been developing here at Newmont. Uh, this is hair physics. You can see here each of the hair strands moving around. Uh, the fan is blowing on them at this point. You have a fan blowing? Is that yeah. What oh, you never yes. said that in your capstone. Yeah, there's actually a fan blowing on these uh, hair strands as well. Um, you can see up here the frame rate, unfortunately, in this is not too great. We're, we're looking pretty shabby for the frame rate. But uh, the really cool part about this was the algorithm I created to map all of these hair strands to the scalp. You can see where they are positioned on the scalp here. It was actually very difficult to create this algorithm because I didn't have anything to base my algorithm on. Creating a scalp is rather difficult, but I was able to do it. And you can actually adjust quite a few variables, including how far the brow comes down, how wide the head is, because as we all know, human heads are not perfectly round. So uh, after we would actually finished the algorithm, I actually implemented a voxel grid to allow me to not have to calculate all of the hair strands. So I only calculated a, a percentage of the total hair strands we're looking at here. And that allows me to actually then take that, the voxel grid does, it allows me to take that and then extrapolate those values onto the rest of the hairs that you're actually looking at. What source did you use for the to learn about how to do hair? Uh, I found a lot of sources online for doing hair, but a lot of it involved using the graphics card. And I'm running all of my calculations on the CPU, so it was actually really difficult to actually find anything that was useful for what I was trying to do because a lot of it was uh, particle based, and then you did density clouds for creating the the hair, and that's just not what I was trying to aim for. I was actually aiming for my own thing that was only going to run on the CPU. Why were you so intent on? I'm not running on the CPU when the graphics card is so much more powerful. Uh, so my pro my capstone project was aimed at using the CPU for all my physics demonstrations and then taking those values and putting them into the ray tracer. Since I knew the ray tracer was not going to be running in real time, I knew I didn't have to do the hardcore physics that the graphics card needs to do. Okay, so then you made the video, the ray traced video, yeah. right? Let's look, look, take a look at that. Okay, so talk about this video, which is, by the way, epic. Yeah, so this is, I, I really love this video. It it took a while to actually render out, but uh, the really cool part is there's about two hundred thousand strands in here, and it just the effects of it's awesome because all the, the strands are interacting with one another. They're interacting with the head. It's it's really cool to look at, and I, I love the fact that as it rotates around here, uh, you can see parts of the scalp through the strands, which is just really cool in my opinion. It was actually I thought at first it was a bug, and I was like, how can I fix this? But I realized later that it's just how you can actually see as you get the positioning proper, you can actually see through some of the strands. It's really cool to look at. Cool, so tell me some of the, the, the big takeaways from this capstone for you personally. What, what, the, what, <laughs> what did you learn? <laughs> that's kind of a broad oh, question. God, that's, that's such a broad question, but I, I love the physics. The physics was quite, was quite fun to learn, but the ray tracing, the ray tracing is, I, I really enjoyed ray tracing. It was one of, it's now a passion for me. I, I loved the idea that you can use math to create images like this and create videos, which is even cooler. And then as well as all the multi-threading stuff that I had to learn to implement uh, parallelism in the ray tracer. So it was basically just being able to do multiple pixels at the same time. That was a big step for me because it's not something we normally cover at Newmont. When do you graduate? I don't graduate for about nine more months. So Nine been... more months, you're headed into Enterprise. Gonna go uh, build some games for some internships next quarter. Yep. So. Uh, what would you say to someone? Obviously, I'm faculty member and you're a student, <laughs> but give it. You know, we have a good relationship here, so give it. Give it to me how it is. Uh, what would you say to someone considering coming to Newmont? So I, I'd say be prepared. It is. It's hard work. Um, if you don't have a passion for it, it's definitely not a place for you. I mean, this goes the same for all colleges. If you you shouldn't be doing something you don't love. I mean, I found a love for ray tracing and now it's something I really enjoy doing. I don't, when I was doing this project, I didn't see it as homework. I saw it as, yes, I get to go home and work on the ray tracer tonight. So if you really enjoy it, it's, it's not work. It's, it's not homework. It's what you want to go do when you get done with your day. How prepared do you feel for entering industry? Uh, after now working on this project, the ray tracer was such a large project to work on and do it all by myself. I feel completely prepared now because I feel like I was able to read these high-level documents and high-level algorithms and have to go through all that stuff and learn it on my own. And being able to do that by myself, it gave me a lot of confidence after going through Capstone. Very cool.